Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. Well, it looks like this series is picking up when it comes to the number of views, the comments, the interest that's associated with these videos. I was doing a quick recap of all my videos from them and I've seen that, yes indeed, there's definitely been an uptick on this stuff. So thank you so much again for your continued support on these random videos. In fact, I'm thinking now that finally uh, I'm going to go ahead and make it a regular regular series based on some of your suggestions too so be on the lookout for that soon and yes indeed to give you an idea of this type of stuff that I'm still looking for here's you know another gangster in this case someone who ruled certain parts small parts but still um, of certain parts there in Chicago and if you think like in a lot of cases like in the world of the Godfather and other mafia movies how they kind of romantically portrayed uh, 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 gangsters in a light not in, like in a lighter mode in terms of protecting their, their community doing good things for the community every now and then of course mixing in bad things but still making them in a more positive light this guy was almost the opposite he was truly there to extort money out of the residence of his location and it has to do with this you're looking at him now one of his rare pictures in fact because I couldn't find much of him but it has to do with him his name is James Cosmano and as always in the world of mafia and gangsters he went by a nickname in this case Sonny Jim ironically so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the info associated with this particular notorious gangster so again his name was Son uh, James Cosmano went by the nickname Sony Jim, but he was born with yet a different name, Vincenzo Cosmano. And it's probably the thing where when he came here to the U.S. back in the early 1900s, either he chose a different name or he was given a different name, but that's how it switched. Instead of Vincenzo, it became James Cosmano. And yes, indeed, he was someone who trans, uh, transported from Italy, in this case, a specific area called Reggio Calabria. And once he came over here, immediately he just went on board in terms of, of joining a local gang, in this case known as the Black Hand, which was a little bit of a notorious gang there throughout their area and he joined them as a young man and he stayed with them for a little while a good while and then, and then he and his other gang members up to 10 of them in some circumstances they became known as the black handers and I was mentioning earlier how the other mafia movies portrayed people in a very light, uh, their lifestyle in a very light hearted, like almost romantic era. No, in this case, he was someone, him and his gang, including others such as James the Mad Bomber, Bel Castro, they all preyed on the residents of, of, of Chicago, specifically in an area known there as Little Italy. And then also some of the uh, surrounding areas there too. In fact, you're looking at some of the pictures of it too. It kind of stands out just like you would see in the movies these places they probably didn't have that much protection from police if they did probably only certain citizens received that protection but not the residents themselves and so they would have this guy this so-called Sonny Jim and his others uh, within that black hand, they would essentially try to extort people from their money. And it's not like a way of them saying, we'll, ex we'll protect you from others. Remember how in Goodfellas, there was a very prominent scene about that, how um, they would essentially extort money from people, but at the same time offer them protection from other gangs. It did not seem like that when I was reading this information here. No, Sonny Jim and other two in the black can they would just basically stra uh, straight out extort money like they would basically state either give us money or we're gonna hurt you and it has to be on a weekly basis such as an example here a very prominent example no less in 1910 uh, this guy Cosmano and his gang tried to extort money out of this other guy his name was James Big Jim Colosimo he was someone that was uh, very powerful there in Chicago but in a sense, I think more along the lines of business and more probably illegitimate business. It didn't seem like, though, he was someone 
that was too in like of course he was probably involved in the in in an illegal trade or maybe even other types of stuff but it whatever was the case he didn't have his own protection uh like in terms of his own gang or anything like that because the way the story goes Cosmano tried to extort money out of this guy out of Big Jim because Big Jim owned a lot of brothels he owned he was probably the biggest brothel owner there and then Cosmano decided to then instead of try to beat up or uh, physically harm this Big Jim himself instead he would hurt his business he would try to harm the prostitutes there at the brothel and or the customers that frequented the brothels and he wanted a big Big payout for it too in order to not do it he said give me fifty thousand dollars a week and this is per week imagine back then 1910 fifty thousand dollars per week that's a lot of money and if if he did not pay then he would essentially harm the prostitutes harm the customers until um, um, the money was given to him so obviously Big Jim was not going to have that happen and so he brought in a local uh, uh, somebody that was very familiar to him in this case his nephew Johnny the Fox Torrio who you're looking at now he was involved in the New York mob scene because he was part of a gang called the five points gang and so what happened here was once uh, the, the the Johnny Torrio's gang came through and that they started fighting with the black hand gang there was a lot of murders involved in fact there were 10 members of the black hand gang remember this was the gang that this guy Sonny Jim was involved in this gang suffered 10 murders throughout this time period one of them actually involved an ambush because yet again uh, this guy uh, Sonny Jim sent him a letter in the mail ironically telling him that yes indeed he will have something in terms of a threat to the guy's restaurant which was nicknamed the Colosimo and if he did not pay him ten thousand dollars with in a certain time period then there would be great harm to the restaurant including torching it outright just outright just destroying it and destroying everything associated with it and so uh, the agreement was yes go ahead come on in I'll pay your money but it was actually an ambush so when Sonny Jim went there he was met by one more time Johnny Torrio and then his five points gang there was a big ambush there was a big fight and no less in this case Sonny Jim himself was shot point blank by a shotgun by that same nephew in this case Johnny the Fox Torrio he was shot and then severely wounded but so there was an angel on his side somewhere because he actually managed to escape he actually left and he went to the hospital and then ended up surviving but it was no doubt thinking later too that he was going to be ambushed there considering how vulnerable he would be later on several of his men from that gang got him out of the hospital and then they left Chicago but if you thought that his activities in it there no he just simply gave it a pause if you will because later on he was found in this case uh, or tried to be found guilty in terms of the shooting death of another gangster someone by the name of Maurice Mossy Enright but in this case there was no evidence or lack of evidence associated with that trial and so he was let go and if you think that he was given you know another chance and thinking maybe I'll just do something right with my life afterward nope cut to about a year later 1921 and he tried to steal three hundred and eighty thousand dollars in cash and bonds from the US mail he actually had one of the postal inspectors working with him and trying to get that money out and this was eventually the stuff that did him in so obviously three hundred eighty thousand dollars especially in the 1920s that kind of stuff is gonna get noticed and so there there was a lot of, of work and investigation in terms of who was involved in the conspiracy and it was found of course him and the others that were trying to do it he was eventually sentenced in 1921 November 14th and he was incarcerated for a couple of years up until 1926 in fact so five years altogether and then after that um, he was forced to leave the country uh, exported in other words or deported 
because of his uh, immigrant status and obviously all the bad things that he had done with his life so ultimately he left the country at that point and then did not come back for at least a little while so and I, well, I was trying to look through other information because there seems to be um, differences of sorts there's the notion that he either ended up dying in this case in 1943 seems like of natural causes back in the country in this case in Rochester New New York so somehow he eventually was able to come back probably just snuck in because um, I was reading somewhere else there was at one point that he arrived in Canada and then just walked in uh, to into the US so maybe he did the same there and then there was another instance I was reading that he died in 1963 so a big difference there um, in terms of the number of years instead of of, of of 1943 it would be 1963 Either way, though, it seems like he was able to come back into the U.S. If someone can clarify that, please let us know. Post those comments below because it seems like there's a big discrepancy on that part. Did he come back into the U.S. truly? Did he die here in the U.S.? Or was he there in Italy, deported, exported, and then um, he was essentially just there living out his life afterward? So if someone has that info, please post those comments below. But that's pretty much it. That's all the info tied to this lesser-known gangster there in the Chicago area, James Cosmano. Again, the so-called ironic, ironic name, Sonny Jim. If anybody has anything else I might have missed, anything else that stood out, please, uh, if you can share that info in the comments we'd greatly appreciate it and again it goes to show all those movies involving the uh, gangsters and the mafia people that portray them in a lighter manner remember there's always this other side where these people that are truly just trying to extort money from a lot of those poor residents who could do nothing for it other than just continue to pay money to not get beat up or worse so all right everybody thanks again as always take care